Hi guys and welcome to this short video. Um, I just first of all want to begin by saying a huge thank you to, to you all for the way in which you have worked so hard online this week and really embraced the new challenge. Great to see so many of you uh, helping each other, supporting each other and working really hard. So thank you and, and really well done. We're going to send you a quick questionnaire this afternoon um, and we'd be really grateful if you could just take a moment just to fill that out. It's an online questionnaire because we just want to know what's gone well this week from your point of view and what could we make uh, what could we do to make it better um, so that we, if we have to do this again next term uh, we can make sure it's as good as possible. But I just want to conclude this uh, this week and again the, the formal end of our term just by sharing with you a little message about Easter as we're about to go into the Easter holidays and I thought it's important that we finish our online experience with landing back on the most important person which is Jesus. So I'm just going to read a verse from Matthew's Gospel now and then give it a few thoughts afterwards about how we might interpret this verse. So here it is, this is from Matthew chapter 27 verse 54 and it says this, When the centurion and those with him who were guarding Jesus saw the earthquake and all that had happened, they were terrified and exclaimed, surely he was the Son of God. Do you know, there are lots of strange types of fear, or phobias, as they're sometimes known. Here are a few that I've uh, come across. Uh, one is called nomophobia. This is the fear of your phone not working, or being out of signal. Apparently, one in uh, one half of all phone users have this phobia. I wonder if you are developing it. I hope not. Here's another one. Spectrophobia. That's the fear of your own reflection. As I get older and greyer and lose hair and get more wrinkles, I'm developing this, uh, this fear, I think. It's not a pleasant thing to look in the mirror anymore. Um, how about this? Some of you may have this, particularly some junior boys, I don't know. Ablutophobia which is the fear of cleaning yourself or washing yourself. Hmm, I don't think that's a great fear to have, particularly if we're all spending a lot of time at home in the near future. And how about this? I'm going to try and pronounce this. Are you ready? This is arachibatirophobia. Arachibatirophobia, which is the fear of peanut butter sticking to the roof of your mouth. That's, uh, that's quite a specific fear, I wonder if any of you have that. You know, the human mind is a really funny thing. We have the capacity to worry a great deal and develop the most extraordinary fears. Of course, some of the things that I mentioned might seem quite funny to us, because fear can also be a really harmful thing. In the verse I read to you at the beginning, uh, those looking at Jesus on the cross, having just died, were terrified. And their fear was based on a variety of things. Some were scared by what they had just seen and felt. There'd been an earthquake and the sky had gone dark. And others were terrified about the future. The man that they had put all their hopes in had just died on the cross. And there they were, standing afraid, wondering what was the future for them now? I guess with the world feeling a little bit different right now, with COVID virus changing our normal experiences, we too might be a bit anxious about the future, about not knowing what that might look like. And yet for the disciples there in front of the cross, feeling frightened, three days later, all that had changed. The disciples' fear had transformed into joy. Their uncertainty had become faith and their anxiety had turned into hope. And why? Because Jesus had risen from the dead. There's a story of two men in an art gallery looking at a painting of two people playing chess. One of those figures is the devil and the other is a man. And the man has only one chess piece left on the board his king. And the painting was called Checkmate. And as the two of men were looking at the painting, one turned to the other and said, you know, there's something wrong with this painting. 
What do you mean? said the other one. Well, either the painter's got it wrong, or this is the wrong title. You see, I play a lot of chess, and this isn't checkmate. The king has one more move. The king has one more move. When the disciples saw Jesus on the cross, they might have thought that it was all over. They might have thought that it was checkmate, but they were wrong because the king had one more move. He defeated sin and he had conquered death. You see, the importance of the resurrection, of Jesus riding, rising from the dead, is everything. If it happened, which I believe with all my heart that it did, then it means that no matter what is worrying us, no matter what fears we may have, we can have a certain hope that the King, King Jesus, always has one more move. So my prayer for you all this Easter is this, that you may understand the amazing love that Jesus has showed for you on the cross, that you may see the glorious truth of the resurrection, and that no matter what the future holds, you may hold on to the hope and to the peace and to the strength of knowing that our King is with you and he always has one more move. Amen.